a very good afternoon friends i welcome you all to the shankar summary 2024 as you know this is the second part of our geography compilation video which covers various important topics related to geography from the month of november 2023 to february 2024 here are the list of articles which we are going to discuss today so let us get into discussion let's look at this question consider the following countries tanzania uganda kenya rwanda burundi and zimbabwe how many of the above mentioned countries share a border with lake victoria see this kind of questions often appearing in the upsc because it asks us to be aware of the major river basins major lakes across the world okay now coming back to this question lake victoria is a very important map based question because of the many significance like it is the africa's largest lake by area moreover it is the world's largest tropical lake and it's the world's second largest freshwater lake by surface area know that the first largest freshwater lake by surface area is the lake superior in north america okay now coming back to question see it is bordered by only three countries they are tanzania with the 51 percentage of uh, coverage second one is uganda with 43 percentage and third one is kenya with a mere 6 percentage of the border okay now let us be also aware of the some of the uniqueness of this lake like it is generally referred as darwin's dream pond this is because the lake is known for the high level of unique biodiversity which is residing in it okay finally this lake victoria is a source of white nile river which flows northward and eventually joins the blue nile in sudan to form the great nile river of africa okay so as we have discussed now it's bordered by only three countries they are tanzania uganda and kenya okay so the correct option is option b now look at this question the term brazzaville declaration heard in the news roughly corresponds to which of the following see option a says that declaration for ending the parasol island disputes between china and japan second one aims for the preservation of three major river basins of the world okay third one to combat human trafficking and the fourth one is preserving the entire coastal area of mediterranean sea see brazzaville declaration is a joint agreement between democratic republic of congo republic of congo and indonesia know that it aims for the preservation of three major river basins of the world like amazon basin congo basin morneo mekong southeast asia basin okay now let us see a brief about these three river basins in our discussion why this is important as we know that in the last year 2023 preliminary we got a question regarding congo basin now let us firstly see about amazon river basin see the amazon basin is a part of south america which is drained by amazon river and its tributaries geographically it is bounded by guiana highlands to the north andes mountains to the west brazilian central plateau to the south and atlantic ocean to the east see it covers a area of about 70 lakh square kilometers or about 35.5 percentage of the entire south american continent okay now politically let us see the countries where they are located the major countries which are in the basins of uh, amazon are bolivia brazil colombia ecuador guyana peru suriname and venezuela as well as the territory of french guyana Now let us continue our discussion. Most of this basin is covered by Amazon rainforest also known as Amazonia with a 5.5 million square kilometer area of dense tropical forest. Amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest in the world. Know that it comprises around 40% of the Brazil's total geographical area. Finally let us be aware of the fact that this basin produces 20% of world's flow of fresh water into the oceans. with this basic secondly let us see about congo basin see as we all know like every other basin which are formed by a river congo river basin is a sedimentary basin formed by the river congo see geographically it is located in central africa know that it is primarily characterized by congo rainforest which is the second largest rainforest in the world now let us see the countries which are situated in the congo basin see the congo river basin is primarily situated among six countries they are cameroon central african republic democratic republic of congo equatorial guinea and gabon finally congo basin climate commission was established in 2016 under the leadership of african union to balance the economic transformation of the congo basin with the aims to preserve the sustainable development thirdly let us see about borneo mekong southeast asia basin in a brief okay see it's the world's third largest carbon sink and composed of two sub regions that is borneo island and mekong river okay now let us see the country through which this river passes through see geographically it has six countries 
like China, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam. See, with this we have seen about three major river basins of the world. Okay, now coming back to question, as we just now saw that this Brazzaville declaration deals with the preservation of the three major river basins of the world. So the correct option is option B. Let us look at this question. Consider the following statements about the cultivation of coffee. See, we shall always see a question from the economic geography part that is uh, the cultivation of crops, uh, coffee, tea, cotton, etc. So, it's in our best interest to learn more about the coffee. Now, before answering this question, let us discuss about the basics of coffee to equip us to answer this question. Okay. See, coffee is the tropical plantation crop. Its seeds are roasted, grounded and used as a beverage. Now, let us see the geographical condition required for the cultivation of coffee. See, this includes firstly, climatic conditions of warm and wet climate. Secondly, a well-drained loamy soil that is the soil which is rich in humus and minerals like iron and calcium. Thirdly, the temperature range should be between 15 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius. Moreover, know that the rainfall range should be 150 to 250 centimeter. Fourthly, please note that the coffee is generally grown under shady trees. So the conditions like frost, snowfall, temperature above 30 degrees Celsius and strong sunshine are not good for the cultivation of coffee. Moreover, coffee requires dry weather at the time of ripening of the berries. And lastly, coffee is grown on the hill slopes at the height of 600 to 1600 meter above the mean sea level. Having discussed the geographical conditions for the coffee, now let us move on to see about the two important varieties of coffee. They are Robusta and Arabica. See, for our understanding, I have differentiated this using the common future and we shall compare and contrast between the two varieties of coffee. Now, let us see the first common feature called flavor profile. See, with respect to Robusta, it is known for strong and harsh taste, often described as the grain-like one with distinct earthly or woody flavor. Note an important point that they have a high caffeine content and is more bitter than Arabica. See, secondly, with respect to Arabica, it is known for milder and more nuanced flavor profile with features like sweetness, acidity and aromatic. See. It can offer a wide range of flavors from fruity, flowery to sugary and tangy notes. Let us see the second common feature. It is conditions for cultivation. See, robusta plants are hardy and can grow at lower altitudes. See, it is because of these features, robusta are more suitable for regions with warmer climates. And moreover, remember that this is more resistant to pests and diseases compared to Arabica. Now with the Arabica variety, see, as we have seen just now, Arabicas are more sensitive to the environmental factors vice versa robusta. Know that it requires specific conditions to thrive like higher altitudes, cooler temperature and ample rainfall. To put it in a succinct way, remember that robusta is robust. Thirdly, let us see with the caffeine content. See, robusta beans typically contain around 2.2 to 2.7% caffeine which is almost double than the amount which is found in the Arabica. Lastly, with respect to production, Please note that Robusta is primarily produced in the countries like Vietnam, Brazil and Indonesia which have more suitable low altitude tropical climates. Whereas Arabica is commonly cultivated in the countries like Latin America, Africa and Asia which is known for their high altitude and suitable climates. Okay, now with having this broad basics, now coming back to question. See the first statement. Coffee require warm and wet climate with a temperature range of 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. See this is correct as we have seen in our discussion. Second statement see the marketing of coffee in India is spearheaded by Coffee Board of India. See the statement is actually wrong as the marketing of coffee is privatized after the LPG reforms of 1991. Okay see the third statement stagnant water is necessary for the enrichment of aroma of the crop. See the statement is also wrong because stagnation often damages the crop. See, second and third statements are incorrect. So the correct option is option A. So with this base uh, about coffee, let us move on to the next MCQ. See this MCQ, it's a statement based MCQ. Statement 1 says that rare earth elements or REE are a set of 17 elements in the periodic table which are very rare in the earth crust. Statement 2 says that the manufacturing of the permanent magnets is one of the important end use of this rare earth elements. Okay, now we shall discuss the base of the statements. See the statement 1. Statement 1 is wrong because rare earth element or REE are of course a set of 17 elements out of which 15 are lanthanides plus it also has scandium and yttrium. But an important point to be remembered is that they are not rare in the earth surface. 
in fact they are present in abundance so where does this uh, element called rare comes this is because their extraction is very difficult as it requires high skill capital incentive and environmental issues this is why they are called rare earth elements now let us see the second statement the manufacture of the permanent magnets is one of the most important in use of the rare earth elements see the statement is correct actually so statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 alone is correct so the correct option is option d but before going into next topic let us be aware about the some of the basics about rare earth elements see we have seen already about the basics of rare earth elements in this discussion now let us continue with the some of the other prelims related facts about rare earth elements see china has the largest reserve which is 37 percentage followed by brazil and vietnam which are having 18 percentage each and russia is having 15 percentage of the rare earth element reserves Okay now moving on to our discussion let us analyze about some of the REE and the distribution in India firstly let us see about graphite see deposits of graphites are located in Chhattisgarh Jharkhand Odisha and Tamil Nadu know that Arunachal Pradesh accounts for 36 percentage of the total resources which is followed by Jammu and Kashmir Jharkhand Madhya Pradesh etc but with respect to reserves Tamil Nadu has the largest share about 36 percentage followed by Jharkhand and Odisha moreover with respect to mining see the mining of graphite are carried out in the states of Jharkhand Odisha and Bihar note that Odisha is the largest producing state contributing to 42 percentage of the total output of graphite this is followed by Tamil Nadu now let us see about the second rare earth element which is called chromium okay now let us see the distribution in india see odisha has more than 93 percentage of the resources which are abundantly available in sukinda valley in katak and jajapur moreover other states like manipur nagaland karnataka jharkhand tamil nadu andhra pradesh having the minor deposits of chromium see with respect to production odisha is the sole producer of chromite ore which is contributing around 99 percentage and know that more than 85 percentage of the ore is of high quality okay with respect to production the second place goes to karnataka see this is all about the discussion in this discussion we saw about rare earth elements from the prelims perspective see revise this often because this can be directly asked in the examination purposes okay with this let us move on to next mcq Look at this MCQ. Here, a list of the recently erupted volcanoes are given, and the right side, the corresponding locations are given, and we have been asked to match it. See, as we all know from our previous question discussion or analysis, volcanoes, the recently erupted volcanoes, are the favorites of UPSC. It will be often coming in the questions. Okay. Now, before answering, let us talk about in a brief about the concept of Pacific Ring of Fire, which is very related to volcanoes. See, it is also called as circumpacific belt or Pacific Ring of Fire. It comprises of a long horseshoe-shaped seismically active belt of earthquake epicenters, volcanoes, and tectonic plate boundaries that fringes the Pacific Basin. See, for much of its 40,000 km length, this belt follows a chain of island arcs such as Tonga, New Hebrides, Indonesian archipelago, Philippines, Japan, and Kuril Islands. Moreover, it also has other arc shaped geomorphic features such as the western coast of north america and andes mountain see volcanoes are associated with this belt throughout its length for this specific reason it is called ring of fire know that most of the world's earthquake the overwhelming majority of the world's strongest earthquake and approximately 75 percentage of the world's volcanoes occur along and within the pacific ring of fire i am posting this image see this image for the better understanding okay with this basics now let us answer the question see all of them are correctly matched as i gave this question only for study purpose okay i will also give him list of other volcanoes which have erupted in the recent past note and revise it often see wakari island or white islands it is in the bay of plenty new zealand mount vesuvius naples italy mount stromboli sicily italy arenal costa rica Mount Batur, Bali, Indonesia, Nisrius in Greece, and lastly Piton D Four Niles. It is in Reunion Island, Indonesia. So I have given a list of the recently erupted volcanoes. Please revise it often, so it will be coming in the question. Okay, with this basic understanding, let us move on to the next question. Look at this question. Recently, deposits of the rare element of tantalum was found in which one of the following basins? Out of four basins, we have to find where it has uh, been uh, discovered. 
Now let us start answering the question. See, a team from the Indian Institute of Technology Ropar has found the presence of tantalum, a rare metal in the subtlest river sand in Punjab. Okay, here the correct option is option A. Now let us see a brief on tantalum from the preliminary perspective. See, tantalum is a rare metal with an atomic number of 73. Know that it's a part of refractory metal groups which are widely used as component strong high melting point alloys now let us see the characteristics of tantalum see an important property of the metal is that it's completely immune to the chemical attacks at temperature below 150 degrees celsius and know that it can be attacked only by hydrofluoric acids moreover tantalum also has a high melting point exceeded by only tungsten and rhenium now let us see the uses of tantalum see they are mostly used in the electronic sector as the capacitor made from tantalum are capable of storing more electricity even in the smaller sizes vis a vis other type of capacitors secondly due to its high melting point tantalum is used as a substitute for platinum thirdly it is used to make components for the chemical plants nuclear plants aeroplanes and missiles etc so in our discussion we saw about the various uh, characteristics and uses of the tantalum as we have already seen correct option for the question is option a now this basic understanding let us move on to next mcq look at this mcq in the recent years eskibo gaza cyprus and catalonia have caught the international attention for which of the following reason is common to all of them see out of the four options the correct option is option b which is a region with a long standing disputes okay now let us see all of the places which are given in the question in a brief firstly esquibo is a long standing dispute between the venezuela and guyana recently both had pledged not to resort to force to settle the long standing dispute over the oil rich esquibo region secondly gaza as you all know it's a disputed region between israel and palestine Thirdly, Cyprus conflict is an ongoing dispute between Greek Cypriot community which runs the Republic of Cyprus and the Turkish Cypriot community in the north of Ireland where the troops of Turkey are deployed. To put it simply, it's a dispute between Greece and Turkey. Fourthly, Catalonia. Catalonia is a autonomous province in Spain which is asking for the complete independence from Spain. So, to come again to the question, the correct option is option B. With this learned points, let us uh, move on to next MCQ. Look at this MCQ. Which one of the following best describes the concept of Humboldt's enigma? Now, before answering the question, now let us see a brief about Humboldt's enigma. See, as we all know, world's tropical areas receive more energy from the sun because of the earth angle of inclination. It makes them to have the greater uh, primary productivity, ecological niches, and creating more complex ecosystem and greater biological diversity. So this was the normal case. But the proponents of the Humboldt's enigma have held that. many areas outside the tropics are also highly biodiverse in nature for example mountain region to put it simply this enigma tells that while we expect diversity to decrease from tropics the mountains have been an important exception to this trend okay now let us see why do mountains have high biodiversity firstly the reason is with geology see the uplift of mountains result in new habitats where new species arise so was the habitats are called cradles see different types of rocks soils also influences the diversity of plant and adaptation for example northern andes in south america have diverse biomes and habitats supported by the rich variety of species across the entire elevation of andes secondly with respect to climatic conditions see species on some climatologically stable mountains persist there for a longer period of time so these spots acts as museums that accumulate many species over a period of time for example Solo forest in western ghats have a diverse species of rare birds thirdly the reason is with evolutionary process see mountains with more geological diversity tend to have a more biological diversity for example eastern himalayas have a group of birds which evolved elsewhere and dispersed to himalayas resulting in the highest diversity there so geologically high geological heterogeneity often produces unique habitat patches on the mountains thereby it promotes diversification so coming back to the question out of four options theory to explain the interrelationship between the mountains and the biodiversity is the correct explanation for the humboldt's enigma so the correct option is option b with this learned points let us move on to the next question Look at this question. This is also a match the following question where a pair of islands are given and the correspondingly the ocean which they are situated is also given and we have been asked to find the incorrect match. See out of four options, see this third option. It is given that Chagos is in North Pacific Ocean. See this is wrong because Chagos Archipelago is in the Indian Ocean. 
Now, in our discussion, let us see a brief about some of the islands in the Indian Ocean. First of all, Chagos Archipelago. See, it's a cluster of seven atolls located in the central Indian Ocean. Know that Diego Garcia is the biggest island on the Chagos Archipelago. Actually, it's a disputed territory between United Kingdom and Mauritius. Secondly, Christmas Islands. See, it's located in the northeastern part of the Indian Ocean to the south of Java. Actually, it is an Australian territory which is known for unique ecosystem including the annual red crab migration and other marine life. Thirdly, we are gonna see about Cocos Island. See, it's located to the southwest of Indonesia. It's uh, also a territory of uh, Australia which is very known for its coral atolls, coconut palm lined beaches and diverse bird life. On continuing our discussion, we can see Comoros Island. See, it's located between Madagascar and Mozambique. See, it's an also an archipelago with a unique blend of African, Arab and French culture. Finally, we are gonna see about Reunion Island. See, it's an overseas department and region of France. It's located approximately 950 km east of the island of Madagascar and 175 km south of the Mauritius. See, Reunion is an outermost region of the European Union and know that it's a part of Eurozone. Okay, with this uh, basics, coming back to the question, the correct option is option C, Chagos. With this learned points, now let us move on to the next MCQ. Look at this MCQ. This MCQ is about the statements regarding the primary waves or P waves which are generated during the earthquakes. See, before answering this question, which is a static question, we shall have a brief on the seismic wave from the exam perspective. See, seismic waves are waves of energy that travel through the earth layer as a result of various uh, geophysical phenomena like earthquake, volcanic eruption, landslides and large man-made explosion. Know that earthquake generate two primary categories of the seismic waves called body waves and surface waves. Let's see them in a detail. So now we shall see about body waves. See, body waves are generated due to the release of energy at the focus and move in all direction traveling through the body of the earth. Hence they are called body waves. These are further divided into P waves and S waves. See, P waves are primary waves moves faster and they are the first to arrive at the surface of the earth. Know that these P waves are similar to sound waves. Note an important point that P waves can travel through solid, liquid and gaseous materials. Secondly, let us see about S waves or secondary waves. See, they arrive at the surface after some time behind the P waves. Note that they can travel only through solid materials. This characteristic of the S waves helps us to understand the interior of the earth. Now, if you compare P and S waves, P waves vibrate parallel to the wave direction leading to the stretching and squeezing of the material. Whereas, S waves vibrate perpendicular to the wave direction and they can create troughs and crust in the material. To be clear, P waves are longitudinal and S waves are transverse in nature. Okay, this is all about the body waves. The next uh, waves called surface waves. See, the body waves interact with the surface rocks and generate a new set of waves are called surface waves. See, these waves move along the surface and travel similar like S waves. Which means they are also transverse waves but has low frequency. Now an important point that surface waves are slowest among the earthquake waves and record lost on the seismograph. But note an important point that they are the most damaging waves of all. Okay, with the sound basic. Now come back to the question. See, in the question, option 1 and 2 are correct as we have seen just now in our discussion. Which means P waves are longitudinal waves and P waves can travel through solid, liquid and gaseous matters. But third one you see, P waves are not the most devastating waves because we just now saw that surface waves are the most uh, damaging ones. So eliminating option 3 here the correct option is option B. With this basic points, let us move on to the next uh, MCQ. Look at this MCQ. Here a list of lakes are given and in the right hand side the cities in which the lakes are uh, situated are given and we have been asked to match it. See the first lake. The lake is Lake Pichola. You guys know that Lake Pichola is situated in Udaipur in the state of uh, Rajasthan. It's an artificial freshwater lake created in 1362 named after the nearby Picholi village. Now let us see the second lake. The second one is Lake Sukna. See. Lake Sukna is a beautiful and picturesque man-made lake situated at the foothills of Shivalik range of Himalayas in the city of Chandigarh. So it is also correctly matched. See the third one, Hussein Sagar Lake. See, as we all know, Hussein Sagar Lake is a heart-shaped lake in Hyderabad built by Ibrahim Kuli Kutub Shah in 1563. See, this lake is fed by River Musi. So this is also correctly matched. See the fourth one, Dal Lake. 
See, Dal Lake is a picturesque lake in Srinagar, which is an urban lake, and it is the second largest lake in the Jammu and Kashmir. Know that this lake is often called Lake of Flowers or Jewel in the Crown of Jammu and Kashmir. So, this is also correctly matched. So, the correct option is option D, which is all the lakes are correctly matched. So, this basic points. Let us move on to the next uh, MCQ. Look at this MCQ. Consider the following countries which share borders with the Red Sea. Okay, we know that the major seas of the world and its associated uh, neighbors are always a darling of UPC, which will be often asked in the preliminary. Before answering, let us see a brief about Red Sea. See, the Red Sea is a seawater inlet of the Indian Ocean lying between Africa and Asia. Know that it is uh, underlined by the Red Sea Rift, which is a part of Great Rift Valley. Now, let us see the countries which are bordering the Red Sea. See this image. To the northwest of Red Sea, Egypt's eastern coastline borders the Red Sea with the popular tourist destinations like Sham il Sheikh or Hurghada. South of Egypt, Sudan has a relatively small coastline on the Red Sea. South of Sudan, Eritrea's coastline along the Red Sea is rugged and has several islands. See, located at the southern entrance of the Red Sea, Djibouti is a strategically important location for shipping. Okay, now let us see on the Asian side. Here, Saudi Arabia has a long coastline along the Red Sea leading to the Gulf of Aqaba. Moreover, know that Jordan has a small coastline at the northern end of the Gulf of Aqaba. And moreover, here only Israel's resort city of Elliot is also on the Red Sea at the northern tip of Gulf of Aqaba. At the southern end of the Red Sea, Yemen has a significant coastline that includes the strategic Bab el Mandeb Strait. So, as we can see here, other than the first uh, statement, all other countries, Egypt, Yemen, Eritrea, and Saudi Arabia, share the borders with the Red Sea. So, the correct option is option C. So, with this land points, let us move on to the next MCQ. Look at this MCQ. This is from the economic part of the geography. Consider the following statements related to the crop turmeric. See, we should ask ourselves why a question about turmeric is appearing in the question. This is because PM announced the formation of National Turmeric Board to support the turmeric farmers addressing their long-standing demand. So, only this question was asked. Okay, now let us see about turmeric. See, turmeric is a perennial herbaceous plant of the ginger family. The plant's underground stems or rhizomes has been used as a spice, dye, medicine and religious marker since the ancient time. Okay, now let us see the significance of turmeric. See, the color of the turmeric mainly comes from curcumin, a bright yellow phenolic compound that has been in the news for its ostensible purpose to fight cancer. As a result, the demand for turmeric with the high curcumin content has risen. Thirdly, with respect to climate, it requires the temperature between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius and a considerable amount of rainfall to thrive. Now, note an important point that India is the largest producer and exporter of turmeric in the world. It occupies about 6% of the total area under spice and condiments in India. See, with these basic points, now let us go back to the question and see all the three statements are absolutely correct as we have seen from our discussion. So, the correct option is option D, all the above. With this basic, let us move on to the next question of the day. Look at this question. This is a map based question. In the left side, we have been given famous ports and we have been asked to match it with their corresponding countries. See the first one. Its Haifa port is perfectly correct as it is located in Israel. See the second one. Ras al Hair. It's also correct as it is the major port of Saudi Arabia. See the third one. Messina. See this is also correct. It is situated in Italy. So you can ask me why these ports are uh, appeared in the exam. This is because all these three ports are components of recently proposed India Middle East Europe. European economic corridor. So only this question got appeared. So we know that all the three are correctly matched. So the correct option is option D. Now moving on, look at this question. See, this question is a static question which comes from the area of physical geography. Okay. Now consider the following statements with reference to karst topography. See, let us have a brief about karst topography before answering this MCQ. See, limestone topography or karst topography is nothing but the landforms which are produced by the chemical weathering or chemical erosion of the carbonate rocks. See, when carbonate rocks like calcium carbonate or magnesium carbonate are eroded by surface and subsurface water it leads to the formation of this picturesque location called karst topography. Here note that karst topography is named after the province in Yugoslavia and the Adriatic Sea where such formations are most notable. Now, moving on, let us see the essential conditions for the development of karst topography. See, the first and foremost condition should be the limestones must be massive, hard, well cemented and well joined. 
know that the rock should be non porous and thickly bedded see this is to aid the water to infiltrate through the joints resulting in the effective erosion of the limestones along the joints moreover we know that the carbonate rocks should be very close to the ground surface so that the rain water may easily and quickly infiltrate into the beds of limestones on continuing our discussion let us see about the erosional and depositional landforms of the karstography see the erosional ones are sink hole swallow hole doline ubla and pole and the depositional landforms are stalactite stalagmite and calcite pillars okay now with this broad basics now let us uh, go back to the questions to solve them okay see the first statement highly fractured or folded limestone beds is one of the primary requirement for the development of this topography see this is absolutely correct as we have just now seen in our discussion let us see the second statement it's also called as bad land topography see the statement is wrong because bad land topography refers to the different types of landscape characterized by rugged highly eroded hills or ridges with steep slopes see this kind of uh, landscapes will be typically formed in the arid or semi arid region with soft easily eroded sedimentary rocks for example in chambal basin in india so this statement is incorrect see the third statement stalactite and stalagmites are the erosional landforms of the karst topography see the statement is wrong because we have just now seen that stalactite and stalagmites are not the erosional landforms but depositional landforms so okay see in this kind of question you can't use any kind of uh, elimination techniques because these are all will come from the basics of the subjects okay now in this question statement 1 alone is correct and statement 2 and 3 are incorrect so the correct option is option Yeah. With this, we have come to the end of our video. If you like today's video, like, comment, and share it with your friends. For more updates regarding UPSC preparation, subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy. Thank you.